Brother Muhammad from the KSA asking about that the Prophet وسلم, when he performed Hajj, he spent the night on the 8th in Muzdalifah, the whole 8th, then he spent the night in Muzdalifah, then on the 9th morning he went to Arafah, and the evening he spent the whole night uh, in Muzdalifah, he went to Arafah, then he spent the night in Muzdalifah, and uh, at Fajr of the 10th, he left from Muzdalifah to Mina, he threw the stones, he did the dhabh, the sacrifice and disorder. He said, you know, nowadays people just don't do that. He said, is it a must like to spend the night in Mina on the 8th, spend the night in Muzdalifa? Now, we said the pillars of Hajj, the pillars of Hajj are Ihram, Tawaf, Sa'i and Arafah. The right order is Ihram, then the day of Arafah, to be in Arafah during the day, anywhere in Arafah, the mountain and the valley, standing or lying down or resting. Then you perform Tawaf al ifada and as sai Then when you do Tahallul, that's it. The rest are called Wajibat. Wajibat and there are Sunan. Wajibat such as throwing the stones, spending the night in Muzdalifa, spending the next three nights in Mina. These are all Wajibat. But staying on the eighth in Mina, the day before Arafah, is Sunnah. So if the person did not do it, the Hajj is still valid. But they missed their word of spending the day and the night in Mina, Yawm Tarwiyah, because this is what the Prophet ﷺ did. Is there any penalty for that? No. What about spending the night in Muzdalifa upon returning from Arafah? That's a wajib. And if you don't do it, you're bearing a sin. You just washed off all your sins on Arafah to encounter a big sin for deliberately skipping the night in Muzdalifa without any justification, just simply because you don't think that you can sleep with people in this plane, like the Prophet ﷺ did, and leave. Many people, many nations, they hire some imams who justify to their people their misdoing and say, in fact, you don't have to be in Muzdalifa, and they just go through it or they don't even go through it. That's haram. People who did not know, they are not responsible because they trusted the leaders, the religious leaders, who will be entirely responsible for bearing the sin of each and, and, and every individual who is performing Hajj and did not spend the night in Muzdalifa. There are some people who are exempt from spending the night in Muzdalifa, but they must spend at least up to midnight. They may leave past midnight. Elders, women, children, weak people, handicapped, the workers, and those who assist them, those who accompany them, that's perfectly fine. We're talking about an example that the brother referred to, people who just belittle spending the night in Mina, spending the night in Muzdalifa, and they go. If you remember, before Hajj, as I spoke about the manasik, and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, خُذُوا عَنِّي manasikakum." We take the manasik of Hajj, the Hajj rituals from home, from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, uh, you know, I just made fun at a practice where people, you know, very rich people, would go on the day of Arafah during the day. They arrive to the case, A, eh? they go in the suit and tie. They don't want to wear their uh, ihram because, you know, they go to Arafah, so they made a violation which requires a fidya that they did not wear the ihram. They may change into the ihram in Arafah. Then at sunset they leave. They escape Muzdalifa, they escape all of that, they perform their tawaf, their sa'i, and they may ask somebody to throw the stones for them and they leave. So they did what? Stayed in Arafah. And they performed tawaf al-ifadah and the uh, sa'i. That if they do, and they left. Guess what? Number one, at least for tawaf al ifada and as sa it must be done past midnight because the Nabi sallallahu did not allow Sauda bint Zam'a or Umm Salama or these women to perform tawaf al ifada or throw the stones before midnight. They stayed like everybody else until midnight, then they were exempt to leave earlier, like six hours earlier than others. But those people who escape all of that and they just, so why? did you come? 
Look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Hajj. وَمَنْ يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ شَعَائِرُ اللَّهِ The whole Hajj is شَعَائِر. The symbols of Hajj. Signs of showing servitude and submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why do you throw the stones? Why do you perform tawaf? Why do you run between a safa and marwa? إِنَّمَا جُعِلَ ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَجْلِ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ To celebrate the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are you any better than any servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are you any better than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions? You want a, like a shortcut hajj? You didn't have to come. You could have just watched it on the screen. <laughs> you could have sent somebody, especially if you've made your hajj once. If you belittle those sha'air of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, imagine the person instead of forgiving his sins, he bears big responsibilities and great consequences of not respecting the symbols and the sha'air of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because ta'zeem sha'air Allah, as Allah said, is a sign of righteousness. And the opposite is a sign of wickedness. If you're too busy, if you're a big businessman, if you're running a big company and you don't have time to stay with people to at least perform tawaf al-ifadah properly, then do the sa'i properly, throw the stones by yourself if you're physically fit and spend the night in Mina. Why did you come in the first place? Uh, you know, Photoshop is available. You didn't have to come. If you're coming just to take some pictures, they can put your pictures together and do some Photoshop with you inside the Kaaba. Not just performing tawaf. Respect Allah's symbols. Respect Sha'air Allah Azza wa Jal or else. You know, why do go for Hajj? I know many people go for Hajj, MashaAllah, every single year. Why? They're very rich. I know somebody who sends at least 50 people every year to perform Hajj out of his pocket, but he himself is very keen to go and he stays the course. Everyone is in need for Allah's mercy. Everyone is desperately in need for the day of Arafah to be forgiven. You send people and you'll get a similar word of theirs, but me too, if I can afford it, why not? And they can afford it. Mr. Big Shot, Mr. Whoever, who are you? What is your beginning? What is going to be your end? What do you carry in your belly? Is what is in your belly different than anyone's belly? Dirt, feces. You're not any different than anyone else. And this is the quality of Hajj. And we had a whole episode before Arafah talking about equality. And that's why if anyone thinks himself superior to others, I shouldn't be sleeping on the floor like others, wait a minute. You would rather not go for Hajj. And believe me, I met people who are like that. What a waste. What a waste. I met people who, thinks, who think this way. So you don't have to come. It's better to send somebody, at least somebody will benefit out of this trip. But respect Allah's sha'air. Jazakallahu khairan. Huda TV's social media sites are the best way to contact us from anywhere around the world. Stay connected with Huda TV's latest news and programs through Facebook, Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Skype, and Instagram. It's fast and easy. Stay up to date with your favorite shows and scholars today. Huda TV, a light in every home.